Hello, how are, you, how are you doing? My name is Mr. Beavers, or my friends call me Eric, so it's also Eric Beavers. And we're gonna do some pieces on philosophy. I thought what I would do, for those of you who don't know what philosophy is, is maybe that's a good place to start, is let's just try to figure out what does it mean to talk about philosophy? What is, what is the word trying to get at? Philosophy, philo, philo means love. So you could have a philanthropist, and a philanthropist is somebody who like uh, gives lots of charity, so philo is to love and anthro is man. So if you love man, you're a philanthropist. And Sophia, for those people out there whose name is Sophie or Sophia, uh, Sophia means wisdom. So uh, philosophy means the love of wisdom. So it, back in the day, if you went back to, like, to the Greeks, because Greeks are kind of famous for being philosophers, when they were seeking out wisdom, they were trying to understand the world. And then when they were trying to understand the world, they were trying to understand anything about the world. Philosophy is really everything. If you're trying to understand anything, if you're trying to understand biology, or you're trying to understand the nature of life, which is biology, you're trying to understand how molecules act, or how people act, or how whales act, you are doing philosophy. And it used to be t talked about that way. So there was no such thing as science. It was just all philosophy. And that's why if you go to college and you get an advanced degree, you can get a PhD. And the PH means philosophy, and the D means doctor. So you can get a doctor of philosophy in sociology. You can get a doctor of philosophy in physics. You can get a doctor of philosophy in mathematics. You can get a doctor of philosophy in anything because all of this is philosophy. There's a number of these things that we just don't call philosophy anymore, although they are, you know, so we don't call physics philosophy, we don't call mathematics philosophy, we don't call biology philosophy. They have their own categories now. And that's because we got better at asking those kinds of questions. So everything else, all the, all the questions we're not very good at asking remain in philosophy. And those are questions like, why am I alive? Or what am I supposed to do with my life? Or what does it mean to be happy? Or what does it mean to love? Or, how does one live a life that's worth living? Or what's the right thing to do? And what is the nature of evil? And what is, what is anger? What causes us to uh, be depressed or sad? These are all questions that stay in the area of philosophy. So we're going to be playing with these ideas. And a lot of it is just going to be about what's the best way to live? What have, what have some of the great minds told us about how one should live a life? So I just wanted to leave with a few quotes. There's a famous... Um, Philosopher's name is Rene Descartes. He said, if you would be a real seeker after truth, it is necessary that at least once in your life you doubt all, as far as possible, all things. So we'll do a little bit of that. Socrates said, an unexamined life is not worth living. So we'll examine life. And Confucius once said, each of us has two lives. And the second one begins when we realize we only have one. So we're going to play a little bit of, uh, with um, how could one live a better life. Welcome back to a brief introduction to philosophy. These segments are only going to be about a minute, minute and a half long, so I just wanted to make sure something was pretty clear. Like, we, like I said last week, philosophy means the love of wisdom, and wisdom isn't the kind of thing you can acquire in a, a minute or a minute and a half. So myself and the people shooting this, I think, would want to make everybody understand that we're going to introduce ideas to you, but these are mostly so you can be exposed to them and uh, hopefully follow up on them and learn a lot about you know, what it means to be a human being, uh, what, what kind of life one should live, uh, why your problems are your problems, uh, how to be happy, that kind of thing. So, so I can introduce what's going to happen next week, I just want people to know that there are really these three famous philosophers that come from Greece, and we're going to be talking about them next week. And you probably know their names, so I'm just going to make sure you guys understand it. There's Socrates. I hope you can see that here. Socrates um, is a well-known philosopher, and he was a teacher of Plato. And perhaps you have heard of Plato. So he was a teacher of Plato. And then Plato was the teacher of the third famous philosopher, which is Aristotle. And so what we're going to do next week is we're going to start talking about some very important things that Aristotle had to say that might help you live a better life. Thank you. Okay, welcome back to a brief introduction to philosophy. If you remember last week, I was mentioning that there was famous philosophers, Socrates, who taught Plato, and Plato, who taught Aristotle. 
And today I want to start a little piece on Aristotle. So Aristotle uh, wasn't actually from Greece. He was from nearby Greece, but he uh, had moved to Greece to study with Plato. And he actually became the tutor of Alexander the Great. So some of you may have heard of Alexander the Great. And um, he actually wrote... He, he, many people think he's one of the, he's maybe the smartest person ever to live in Western civilization, but we've lost much of what he wrote in a, in a major fire in Egypt. So we have about 12 volumes that are about that thick. So we still have, uh, we still can learn from uh, much from Aristotle. And what I want to just briefly touch on is he invented a lot of the categories that we use when we think about the world. And one thing that he invented or discovered is logic. And for him, logic was, uh, and still is, you know, the study of correct reasoning. Uh, another way to think of that is logic is uh, learning what it means to think clearly. So what I want to just touch on here is he said if we're, we have to recognize that when we think, we're clearly thinking with our minds, but what our minds are using are words. So he said you have to recognize that you can't think clearly unless you know what the words you're thinking with mean. So just really quickly, we, we play within our class that a lot of people will say, I believe in God or I don't believe in God. And then I'll ask, well, what do you mean by the word God? And clearly, you can't be thinking clearly if you don't know what that word God means. So we'll play a little, a little bit with this uh, later, uh, but thanks for your time today. Welcome back to a brief uh, introduction to philosophy. Last week we were talking about Aristotle and logic, and if you want to think clearly, you have to define the words you think with. And this, I think, gives us a chance to try to think through happiness and goodness. Uh, but because a lot of people say, well, I want to be happy, or you know, I want my family members to be happy, I want my loved ones to be happy. But then, of course, the question becomes logically, okay, but what does happiness mean? And Aristotle had a lot to say about that. And he had a lot to say about what it means to be happy and what it means to live a good life. But of course, then you have to define what does happiness mean and what does good mean. And he wanted to start with that good, good, I'll just use good for now. Good depended on the species. What's good for a plant or what's good for a rabbit is different than what's good for a human. And he said, all humans are the same. All humans are the same. We all have the same nature. So what's good for me is the same thing that's good for you and is good for your parents and is good for everybody else because we all have the same nature. So he said, if, if we want to figure out what is good for human beings and what makes us happy, then we have to figure out what is the nature of this particular species we call human. So what we'll do next week is try to figure out what does he think makes all humans happy and what is the good towards which all humans ought to be moving because that is actually what is good for us. Thanks for your time. Appreciate it. Okay, so last week we were talking about Aristotle and we were talking about logic and thinking clearly and to think clearly uh, you have to realize that you think with words, so you have to clarify what do the words mean. And so Aristotle was a big classifier of language. What, what does everything mean? So he would, he would even go down and say, okay, so if we're going to say something is a thing, then that must be different than nothing. So we would have to explain, well, what is the difference between thinginess and nothingness? And then he said, well, if once we understand what things are, we can start to realize we can come up here and realize, well, there's actually two kinds of things. And he said, well, there are living things and there are non-living things. And of course, what he had to do was explain, well, what does it mean to be alive? And therefore, what does it mean to be not alive? And then he said, well, once we understand that there are living things, we can actually understand, well, there's actually two kinds of living things. There's living things that have motion and there's living things that have locomotion. Those, that's the difference between plants and animals. And then he started saying, well, once we know there are certain things that have locomotion, we can try to figure out are there different kinds of things that have locomotion. And then he said, well, there are different kinds of things, and like there are humans and animals. And then once you understand, well, there are humans, of course, you'd have to explain what a human is. And then he says, well, then for humans, we can try to figure out, okay, what is good for a human? 
as opposed to what is good for a lion or good for a whale or something like that. And there's a very famous picture. We'll play with this next time. It's called The School of Athens by Raphael. And you have Aristotle and Plato in the middle. And Plato is pointing up like there's some ultimate sense of good. And Plato, uh, Aristotle is pointing out, meaning he's going to try to figure out what is actually good for each particular kind of being. So next week, we'll talk a little about, well, what is good for a human being? Thanks a lot. Welcome back to a brief introduction to philosophy. We were talking about Aristotle, and last week we were talking about good and happy for humans. So let's kind of see if we can play with that. Let's say the vice principal or somebody tells you that you should go, you should go to your third period class. So what they're really saying is that it's good to go to your third period of class. That's why you're saying they should go. And so then the question, you could always ask, right, well, why is it good? And they could say, well, because then you can graduate. And you could say, well, yeah, but why is that good? And they say, well, because then you can get a job. And, you and if this keeps going on indefinitely, this infinite regression thing, you'll actually see that it's really nonsense. So if you're going to say something's good, then that good must be good because it actually helps you get to something that's good in and of itself. Now, we'll, we'll play with that a little bit more. Um, next week, but if you want to kind of see what that looks like is I have this thermos in front of me and if you're playing the warm hot game and somebody said you're getting warmer if I was trying to get to the thermos, warmer would make sense and if I was moving away from it, colder would make sense. But if I didn't know what we were aiming for and somebody and I stepped, it wouldn't make sense to say it's warmer or colder because we just don't know where we're going. So. In order to say something's good, and we'll play with this next week, or bad for that matter, it can only be good if it actually helps you get to something that's good in and of itself. What we're going to try to figure out with Aristotle is what, what does he think that ultimate good is. It has a lot to do with happiness. We'll play with that next week. Thanks a lot. Welcome back to a brief uh, introduction to philosophy. And if you remember last week, we were talking about Aristotle and the, the logic of how if somebody says you should do something, they're really saying it's good to do something. And then, of course, if it's good to do that, and it's good to just do that, and there's no ultimate good to which everything is reaching, then it would just be illogical. And of course, um, then the question is, is what would that capital G good look like? How, what would it mean to have something that is the ultimate good? Now, uh, we'll have to play with this more, but he says it's something like, although it's not quite this, it's something like happiness. And for today, just see if you can follow this. If, if somebody says uh, you should go to class, the question why makes sense. And if they say, well, because then you can graduate, you question, yeah, but why is that good makes sense? But if ultimately they say, well, because then you'll be happy, your question of, yeah, but why should I be happy doesn't seem to make any sense. Because the reason you would want to be happy is because then you'll be happy. So happiness seems to have the kind of quality of some ultimate thing to which all goods are leading us. Now, we'll play with this some more next week, but for Aristotle, happiness is the answer, but it's not the kind of happiness we think happiness is. So next week, we'll play with what, for Aristotle, what is happiness or what is the ultimate goal to which all goods are leading us. Thanks a lot. See you next week. Welcome back again to A Brief History of Philosophy. And last time we were talking about how this ultimate good, this capital G good to which all other goods should be heading could be something like happiness. Because, because again, asking why would I want to be happy or why should I be happy doesn't really tend to make sense. But what a lot of people don't understand is for Aristotle, happiness wasn't the kind of happiness that we think of it as. It wasn't this feeling thing. So like I often say in class, when we talk about happiness, we're often talking about, you know, you'll be happy and then you next day you might not be as happy and you kind of go that up and down thing and for aristotle happiness isn't like that happiness is this flat line thing because what he means by happiness is not he means something more like excellence or um flourishing so the real question for him is um if our ultimate goal is excellence or our ultimate goal is flourishing, um, the question is excellent at what? And what does flourishing look like? So what next time we're gonna do is we're gonna talk a little bit how to start thinking through what kind of excellence is one looking for if they really wanna be 
what he considers happy. So we'll, we'll talk then. Until then, thank you. Welcome back to a brief uh, history of philosophy or a brief introduction to philosophy. Last time we were talking about how what Aristotle really thinks the capital G good is, the thing that we're all actually all aiming for or all goods are aiming for is excellence or flourishing. And so we were talking about, okay, well, excellent at what? And for him, it's being excellent at uh, what you actually are or being excellent at being a human being. So those of you who had my class know that I like cheetahs a lot. So I often use the cheetah example. And Aristotle would say something like, what a cheetah really wants, what they really want, would really make them happy is to be excellent at being a cheetah. And a cheetah is not supposed to try to be a whale. And a whale is not supposed to be try to be a cheetah. So all species are trying to be excellent at what they actually are. And that's what human beings are trying to do. He says what really makes you happy, which again is a flat line happy, is uh, to be excellent at being a human being. And for him, the difference between human beings and other creatures is that we're conscious. We know we're here. We, we, we can think this is me. So we have self-awareness. And for self-awareness beings, uh, they actually face 12 different situations. And if you become excellent at facing those 12 different situations, you'll be excellent at being exactly what you are, and then you'll be happy. So next time we'll start talking about what are those 12 um, different situations we face as humans and, and how might one become excellent at that. So until, until then, thanks for your time. Welcome back to an introduction to philosophy. So the last time we were here, we were talking about how Aristotle thought that um, our happiness went really to flourish or to be excellent. And what we realized or what I indicated was that what he meant was to be excellent at being human. And then I said, well, to be excellent at being human is to be excellent at being a conscious being, a, a, a being that uh, understands you're alive. So what he said was we really only in our lives face 12 situations because we're conscious. And if we become great at those 12 situations, we'll become great at being human. So just as an introduction to that today, so what he thinks is there's these certain things that we face. There's 12 different ones. I only put up four. And then um, he can show us how to be great at these things. So I'll just give you a sense of this. He says, one thing you face because you're a conscious being is the fact that you know you're going to die and you know you could get hurt. So we face fear. And you also face uh, situations where you anger comes into play. So to be good at dealing with fear, to be good at dealing with anger, to be good at dealing with giving. So we're always faced with um, questions about what should we give? Should we give our time? Should we give our commitment? Should we give our attention? Should we give our money? Um, and what should we give it to? So this is what we face. To be good at giving, knowing how to give, how much to give, what's the right amount to give, is to be good at being human. And then the last, well, at least the last thing that I put up here, again, there's 12 of these, is the desire for honor. So since we know we're alive and we know other human beings are alive, um, there's always the question of how much should we care about what they think of us? How much should we care about what other people think of us? Is it, is it good to want them to like us? Or is it, could, you, could you want others to like you too much? How do you actually do that well? And so for Aristotle, to be good at these things is to be good at being human. So what we're going to play with next week is we'll play a little bit with, well, how do you, what does it mean to be good at dealing with fear? What does it mean to be good at dealing with anger, etc.? So until then, thanks a lot. Have a good week. Welcome back to a brief introduction to philosophy. If you remember, we were talking about Aristotle and what does it look like to be happy. And for him, in order to be happy, you have to be good at being human. And he said to be human is to be conscious. And therefore, because we're conscious, we face different, um, 12 different situations in our lives. So today, I just want to talk a little about fear. He said one thing we face because we know we're alive, we also know that we're going to die. Therefore, we also know there is danger. So we face fear. And for him, to be good at facing fear is to have courage. Now, what that means is, is to handle fear correctly, is to have courage. So for him, a, a virtuous person or only a person who's good at being human actually knows what courage is. So what often happens is somebody will have what somebody might think is too much courage. And he would say, well, there's no such thing as too much courage. That's like saying there's 
too much goodness. There's no, there's no such thing. So if one has too much courage, they're actually not courageous. And quite often what they are is they're afraid to look cowardly. And so they go above and beyond. And then some people, oh, come, kind of everybody knows this term, they don't have enough courage and they're cowards. So for him, in order to be happy, and again, it's a kind of a flat line contentment, one has to learn how to face fear correctly. And to do that is to have courage. And if you are, you're on your way to being virtuous. Thank you. I'll see you next time. Welcome back to a brief uh, history of philosophy. And if you remember, we were talking about Aristotle and how one can be happy and be good at being human. And another um, situation we face is the act of giving. And the question for human beings, because we're conscious, is often, how much do I give? How much time do I give to somebody else? How much gifting do I give to somebody else? How much money do I give to somebody else? What should giving look like? And what he would say is a person who is good at being human knows what giving looks like. And I often say in my class, because this can be often tough, is that here's what happens when we give is sometimes we give too much, but actually when we give too much, it's not actually giving. So if Maya is a teacher, if I'm giving somebody too much help, what I'm actually doing is not helping them. And it actually becomes now an act of not giving. So for Aristotle, one has to learn how to give. And we often talk in my classes, like, okay, so you see a homeless person and they want your money. And they would ask for some money. And if you give them money, is that an act of giving? Or is that actually an act of taking because you're taking away their um, ability to do it on their own? Now, I don't have the answer to this, but a virtuous person would know because they know how to give. So that's a little bit on the background of giving. Again, if you want to learn to be happy, you got to learn what giving should look like. Thank you, and I'll see you next time. Welcome back to A Brief History of Philosophy. We're just, again, talking about Aristotle, and I think this is going to be our last time, and I just want to talk a little bit about uh, another um, challenge that human beings face, another aspect of our lives, is anger. And for Aristotle, anger is there for a good reason, because there are boundaries being crossed, or there's some type of injustice happening. So he doesn't think anger is a bad thing or a good thing. It's a question of when are you angry and how are you angry. So for him, um, good temper, if one, the virtue is good temper, one knows when to be angry and knows how to be angry. So I often say in my class is, if you look at the state of the world today and you're not angry, that doesn't make you good temper. That makes you at some level bad temper because you ought to be angry because there's lots of injustices in the world. So he thinks some people are too angry because they're angry at the wrong things or they don't know how to express the anger. And some people are not angry enough. And again, he does not think you're good-tempered if you're not angry enough, because there are some things you ought to be angry about. So that I think that finishes our time. I, I hope you've uh, got a couple ideas, and I would definitely recommend go out and read Aristotle, and go out and read the Stoics who say some of these ideas. You might uh, learn a little bit about yourself, and it might help you to be happy in your later years. So thanks for your time. Appreciate it.